I know God spoke to you about Matthew 24. I don't know what he told you, but I just know this. I have the question, but I don't have the answer. You have the answer. What did God speak to you about Matthew 24? Yeah, on June the 1st, 2006, mm -hmm. I was speaking at a conference in South India when the Lord appeared to me and he said, read Matthew 24, 8. So I turned my Bible and I read the scripture. It says, all these are the beginnings of sorrow. Mm -hmm. So I asked the Lord Jesus, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. And then he began to explain to me the book of Revelation, how the tribulations, the message of the seven angels to the seven churches and the blowing of the seven trumpets and the outpouring and the breaking of the seven seals and the outpouring of the wrath of God, the seven wrath, they all fit in what Matthew 24 says. Mm -hmm. The Lord explained clearly the timelines that all Christians will go through the tribulation. And when the Lord said that, I, it shook me by surprise because I told the Lord, this may sound funny. I told the Lord, Lord, whatever you are saying to me is contrary to what we have been preaching, the Pentecostals are preaching. That's right. And uh, that's when the Lord said, all you people are wrong. Oh. <laughs> that's what he told me in prison too. Look at that. Did so you know that? It's the same God, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> at least he's the not one of those God. millions of gods out there that oh, other wow. people are worshiping around the world. Exactly but right. I came to believe that I was teaching some things that weren't quite right. Mm -hmm. As I studied and studied and studied. The sad thing is, most people say, well, it doesn't matter when the rapture takes place. Mm -hmm. But it matters if you're believing that the helicopter is going to come and pull you out and it doesn't come. Yeah. If I'm wrong, I will apologize as we go up. I promise. I promise that. I promise that. But w did you recently come to believe that we were going through some things that we didn't expect? No, it was in that encounter I had with the Lord in the year 2006. So I was shocked at what the Lord told me. And then he asked me a question. He said, okay, let's go by what you all are believing and what you all Pentecostals are preaching, that the rapture will take place before the tribulation. And the Lord asked me a question. If the rapture will take place before the tribulation, then who will be behind? So I told the Lord, those, those who are foolish virgins and the unbelievers and all that. So he said, all right, let's go by that reasoning. So if the foolish virgins and the unbelievers will be the ones who will be left behind and they will face the Antichrist. The foolish virgins are foolish and their minds are dull of understanding and they will not discern the word anymore. Mm -hmm. Then he asked me, he said, tell me now, why then need the Antichrist to force these people to take the mark of the beast? He need not force them because they were all, all readily will accept the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. So why need he force them? But the scripture says he will force them. So who will he need to force if the righteous are already gone? Yeah. So that opened my eyes. So that's when the Lord said, look at this. The mark of the beast will be the final test for all Christians or all over the world. Who will have their allegiance to God? Who will not? So the mark of the beast will separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares, mm. the wise from the foolish, the false from the true, and the wolves from the sheep. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate test. Because only the true believers will not love their lives unto death 
and will refuse to take the mark at all costs. Mm -hmm. But the foolish ones or the false believers will accept the mark of the beast thinking that it's nothing wrong. Like a, uh, a year ago, a mm -hmm. pastor in Singapore, he shared with me a very shocking incident. He had lunch with one of the elders of the, one of the largest church in that nation. And over lunch, this elder told this pastor, it's nothing wrong to take the mark of the beast. It's perfectly all right. You <laughs> can take the mark of the beast. You will not go to hell. And this pastor was shocked to hear that word coming from this elder of a very, very large church in that nation. So if the elder believes that, mm -hmm. probably the whole church believes that. Mm -hmm. So we have many, many Christians like that who Brother, believe that. Brother Sadhu, have you folks been hearing that? Mm -hmm. This is a new doctrine yeah. that's being taught all over the world. I'm shocked to hear you say that because I have not, I don't think we've talked about it on our show. Uh, we have not. Because we're hearing it. We're starting to hear it, mm -hmm. the rustling and and to hear you say that you actually talk to somebody that in a major church, mm -hmm. they're just saying, it's okay. What's going on? Mm. Are we being set up? Is, this, is Satan so powerful now that he's working on the minds of the church people to deceive them? He wants them in hell with him. You said something earlier, no? That people are greedy for wealth. Yes. They are covetous, even Christians. We're not talking about non-Christians. We're talking about Christians now. They are covetous and they're greed for wealth. Mm -hmm. If they have a small car, they want a larger car. They have a small house, they want a bigger house. So they'll go to any prosperity Christian meeting where a preacher will say, sow your $100 and you'll get 10000 Mm -hmm. all, all your debt supernaturally cancel. They flock to such meetings because it tickles their ear. Mm. And the scriptures prophesy that in the last days, there will be believers who will give themselves over mm -hmm. to false teachers who will tickle their ears. They will no more pay heed to sound doctrine. That's right. So that which you and I are sharing, except for a small remnant, the larger Christian crowd will not listen because they want their physical needs and their material needs met. So what most Christian ministers are doing today is preparing the Christians to stay permanently on this world and not preparing them to go to heaven. Oh my God. In love wow. with this present world. Yes. When we are preaching, oh God wants you to be well. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be rich. That is the will of God. No doubt it is God's will that we should be well, but not greedy. You mentioned uh, a scripture earlier that the love for money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. It's the love for money. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the love for money that makes you sin. Yeah. It's the love for money that makes you do all kinds of evil things. And it's the love for money that makes a minister of God milk his congregation and do all kinds of evil. So people also have that greed inside them and they will gravitate towards like-minded ministers who will teach them false teachings and make them even bow down to the Pope mm. and accept him as a true prophet of God. They'll all be duped. They'll all be like the rats that will follow the pipe piper. Mm. 